What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and this is going to be a quick and simple video on setting up Slack webhooks. I primarily use this when setting up some quick and dirty monitoring on systems, so my monitors can actually send notifications via Slack. If you watch my recent video on the Active Directory honeypots, I used a canary token to send alerts via email. You could just replace that whole canary token piece with this piece if you want to send those alerts via Slack instead of email because some people prefer that. So with that being said, let's just jump in. So here we are on the Slack website. All we have to do is click try it for free and then continue with our Google account and it will automatically create us a workspace. So we can do create new workspace and it's gonna put us in a Slack web client that is just god awful. So I'm gonna to go to slack.com, we'll go to products and download the client. It should be downloading. Download Slack. Oh, 64 bit, there it is. And we have Slack set up. It looks like it's going to take a couple minutes to download, so I'm going to pause the video. Oh, no, no need to pause. Already done. So refresh. Let's run it. I think it needs to be ran as administrator. I'm not positive, but wait for it to start. I'm guessing it's going back to Microsoft to do some type of smart screen checks or something like that, since it is taking its sweet time here. There we go. Looks like it has started installing. And here we go. So we can just click sign in. It's gonna take us to the browser. We can just open this in Slack. And this webhook should log us into our workspace, which will then let us create a webhook for a channel. Uh, that was weird. Open in Slack. Okay, so now it is loading. So we just have to give the workspace a name. I'm just going to call it IPSEC and then add teammates. Uh, there should be a skip this step. Yep. And what are we working on? Um, I'm going to do monitoring. So now we have the monitoring channel created. I'm going to right click, well, right click it, view channel details, I believe. And then the first thing I want to do is make this a private channel. So random people can't join this. It's just a security thing because we're putting monitoring in. Sensitive details could be here. Now we can go over to integrations, add an app, and then I'm just gonna type webhook and add this app. It says it's a legacy app and it could go away. So hopefully it doesn't go away because this is super easy to use. And I like this over other apps because it can only um, send messages, right? You can put like full out bots that can interact with it, but the way we're going to be using this is not ideal for that. Anyways, let's just click on the monitoring channel and then add the wet incoming webhook thing and copy this URL. So I'm going to open up notepad and we're gonna put this here and I'm going to save this just so we have it in the future. And it tells us how to use it. So we create a payload like this and then just post it, I believe. Let's see. Uh, we can set an icon emoji. Here we go. So let's just copy this and then go over to our monitoring channel. I think it's installed already. So let's open up a command prompt. PowerShell. And let's paste what it gave us. So it's going to go in the channel monitoring. The username is going to be webhook bot. And that's the text. And invalid. I wonder if it doesn't like all the escapes. Actually, it doesn't like the dash x post. I'm guessing dash dash data URL encode. It doesn't like as well. Um, I'm just going to switch over to invoke web request because I know that syntax a bit better. So it's invoke, well, invoke rest method. And then we can give it the URL. So it's going to be this. And then we want to give it dash method post and dash body. 
I'm going to put the body in as a variable. And then content type is going to be application slash JSON. And then body is going to be convert to JSON. And we're going to give it some data. So we can give pretext is equal to um, automated alert. And text is equal to please subscribe. So let's see what happens with this if I typed it right. So if we paste this in, no syntax error, that is a good thing. Paste this. Uh, parameter can't be found that matches content type. Uh, probably no dash. Paste. There we go. And we have the automated alert right here. Um, if we look at the other one up here, let's see. It's got a username. I'm going to add username to this to see if it changes. Username is equal to, uh, we'll do this, we'll call it bot. We're not going to be creative here, right? Um, so let's copy this, go back to a PowerShell, paste, and we have successfully changed the um, username. And the last thing we can do is icon emoji and put this over to ghost is equal to ghost and see what this looks. And I'm sure there's other emojis we could give it. Uh, I wonder if that didn't work because maybe it just didn't put a new icon. Yeah, there we go. So we have some automation that, well, not automation, but a way to send messages into Slack. And then the last piece that's gonna be useful for future videos is putting actual uh, variables in this text. So let's do that real quick. Um, we're gonna say message is equal to, and I believe I can just do env computer name. I'm gonna say, oh God, I'm on insert. Host name, env dot computer name. And I think I can put this in brackets like that. I'm gonna check this out real quick. Message, that did not work. Um, is it like this? Definitely not that. env dot computer name. Um, env. Is it env colon computer name? Yes. So env colon. Message. That is good. And then I can do um, like a backtick n for a line break. And I'm going to do username and then env colon username. And if we look at this message, that looks good. And where the text is, now I can just put dollar message. And if we send all of this, we have our automated alert. So hope this all made sense um, and enjoy its use in the future videos. Take care, guys, and I'll see you all next time.